Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mardu Greasefang. Welcome back, everybody, to the Thursday Flex Day here on It Resolves. Thankfully, we are getting to uh, fill out this slot because, again, I am out of town as of when this video will be releasing. In fact, I will have been out of town. I should be on my way back, hopefully. Uh, but it has been a busy week, and so I'm doing my best to pre-record for you guys, and I'm really excited for today's deck, actually. Uh, now, there are a couple things I want to mention. You've probably, if you've played any amount of Explorer, you've probably seen this deck before. This is the Grease Fang deck. Look to reanimate some of your big powerhouse vehicles like Parhelion as well as Sky Sovereign. I should also do this, I always forget to. Uh, so it is looking to basically reanimate these big things and kind of win the game very, very quickly. Now to utilize and get these cards into the graveyard, uh, we do have a couple of little pieces of tech. Uh, first and foremost, a little bit of self mill. Uh, so Stitcher Supplier, a phenomenal card for this deck, obviously a great turn one, hopefully fills up the graveyard with at least one of these big creatures or vehicles that we can then reanimate with the Grease Fang later on. Uh, but we also have other things. So we've got Valderan Epicure. This gives us a blood token, uh, as well as the Blood Tithe Harvester, which again, gives us a blood token. Those are all really important pieces uh, that, again, we can utilize to discard a card from our hand, hopefully one of the vehicles, uh, and then allow ourselves to bring it back. Uh, now, we also have things like Fable of the Mirror Breaker here, which is more of a long-term game plan for sure, but if you get this down turn three and you have to discard, you know, a couple of things from your hand on turn four, hopefully you can reanimate then after the fact. So, a very powerful card, obviously, for the deck. Uh, now, but just in case we throw the Grease Fang into the graveyard in our self-mill strategy, uh, we do have things like Can't Stay Away, so this is going to give us the opportunity to bring it back. Uh, eat any creature card, technically, with mana value 3 or less can come back with this. If the creature would die, you exile it instead. And then you can actually flash this back as well for uh, some added value, which is quite good. Uh, we do have things like Lightning Axe, so as we're discarding with some of our blood tokens, if we need to deal 5 damage to anything, we can certainly do so by discarding this or paying the extra 5, obviously. Not super likely to be able to pay the extra 5, I think it's much more likely that we pay uh, by discarding it, and that's obviously going to be kind of the move if we can make that happen. We do have Fatal Push here as well, and then of course Deadly Dispute to draw us into the deck and give us some treasure tokens. Uh, one of the big backup plans of this deck is of course Kroxa. Kroxa is extraordinarily good in a deck like this, which is filling the graveyard so you can escape this multiple times if you needed to. Uh, obviously if the opponent removes it, you can bring it back again. Uh, uh, but it also just has nice, very easy value for things like can't stay away. If you need to get a card out of hand, you can bring this back. You certainly don't want to exile it, but, you know, if you needed to, we could certainly do that. Uh, we do have Soren here as a one of as well. So as long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers you control have lifelink. Honestly, that alone is really helpful for the deck. We're obviously looking to do some major damage with these creatures uh, slash vehicles. And so giving them lifelink just means that we're getting ourselves out of range of the opponent's deck, hopefully solving that problem before it even becomes a problem and then being able to take over long term. Uh, it does obviously have the plus two of being able to hit one, uh, one point of damage to any player or planeswalker. And then that minus X, return target creature card with mana value X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a vampire in addition to its other types. So again, it gives us that ability to pull the Grease Fang back if we need to. It's just a nice big, uh, big play for the deck for sure. Uh, definitely more late game. Obviously, we really top out at two and three. Uh, we're not necessarily looking to play these cards outright, uh, but the Soren certainly is a great option to have. So all of that to be said, again, if you've played any amount of Explorer, you've probably seen this deck uh, having been playing either playing it yourself or playing against it uh, to, to relative success. We probably won't uh, as often. I've only practiced one game with it, and so I'm not necessarily thinking we're going to do super well, but I am really excited to try it because I've been against it and I only have played a limited number of games in Explorer. So this is a really exciting thing for me. I think this is a really fun deck and I'm excited to highlight it here. We're going to jump right into it, guys, and let's see how it goes. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Now, this is actually kind of an interesting hand because we obviously have the Stitcher Supplier and the Harvester, which is a nice one into two, but the two Parhelions are a little tricky. Obviously, we do get to discard one of them, so I think because of that, we can probably keep, uh, but it certainly is a little bit sketchy. We're going to have to 
work around that a little. We don't necessarily want all of these in the hand. Uh, we, we'd much rather have them kind of on the top of the deck for the Stitcher supplier to throw away, but we'll make it work. We'll do the best we can. Uh, again, guys, Explorer is a relatively new format for me. Um, I know a lot of people have delved pretty deep into it, and certainly there's some really powerful decks, which is why it is intriguing to me. It feels uh, slightly modern-esque, uh, which modern, if you don't know, is my favorite format. We really don't get to see much of that anymore. Uh, and so I'm really happy to see that, you know, on Arena, we at least have some, somewhat of an equivalent. I don't know that it's, it's definitely not one for one, I should say, but, uh, I am really excited to try this out and hopefully have some fun with it. And again, Explorer is a really awesome format, so I've, I've been enjoying it. I like it a lot more than Alchemy. I've kind of shied away from Alchemy. Um, I just don't see it as all that exciting, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Also, we may just auto win. Okay, no, there we go. We've just got a slow player here. Uh, interesting that they played right as the timer got to the low point, but that's fine. Um, all that to say, though, guys, I uh, I do kind of want to branch out a little bit, especially during this month of August, where uh, obviously st the standard environment has not been figured out necessarily, but certainly um, is a little bit further back than it necessarily was a month ago, because we've already kind of seen a lot of what's what's been out. Uh, we're also getting up towards a rotation, as we've had a lot of podcast episodes talking about the rotation. And all of that to say, uh, I, I think now is a prime time to explore other formats. If you haven't tried uh, Explorer, maybe this is a great time for you to do so. Maybe you can try something new this time. Uh, and for me, that certainly is the case. So I'm, I'm happy uh, to, to try some of these things out here. Um, interesting. So I'm going to first do this. Uh, we're actually just going to see what we draw here. Okay, uh, not great, to be honest. Um, I think with that in mind, what we will do is just throw this out. Uh, we could Deadly Dispute. I think we're going to end up just passing here, unfortunately. So they, they have a Deadly Dispute. That, does, that honestly is not a great draw for them off of the Evelyn. And a backup Evelyn isn't necessarily great off of the first. So there is a little bit of uh, hope for us here. What we can also do is block, and then, of course, if we needed to, uh, Deadly Dispute, which is part of why I played the untapped land there. We don't have to worry about hitting the life loss with the shock lands, but in, additionally, we don't get a tapped land with the courtyard. So um, I'm, I'm happy with that. We'll see if uh, this works to our advantage or not. Okay, yeah. So again, this is exactly why we wanted to leave up that Deadly Dispute. It gives us a little bit of extra value here. We get to draw a couple cards. Uh, interesting. I wish we could. <laughs> wish we could hit that. Uh, the Grease Fang is great, though. Um, yeah, of course. Alright. Uh, does have Death Touch and Lifelink here. Now, the question is, do we actually want to block this, or do we just take it? Um, I'm just gonna take it, funny enough. Not all that concerned by it. Uh, let's go ahead and draw. This only hits up to four if something else uh, left the battlefield this turn, and unfortunately that was not the case. So um, let's go ahead and throw the Grease Fang out for obvious reasons. Gains haste, return it to the hand. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and go to combat here. So that gives us the Parhelion, but we're not... Okay, yes, we are. Here we go. Grease Fang gives us the opportunity to do this. Fantastic. Um, I think we just go here and maybe send the one here. Not really going to worry too much about that. Uh, ooh, kind of messed up there then. Um, I think, yeah, it would have been better if we had just killed this first, but that's fine. We maybe should have sent the other one there too, but I was thinking to kill this. That's all good. I was thinking these had to attack uh, the, the player here, so that was just a bit of a mistake on my end. Uh, no worries at all. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I am going to pay the two and just throw the Stitcher Supplier out. Um, this gives us another few cards into the graveyard, which may or may not be useful, but uh, it certainly gets us a little further into the deck, and now we've got these two flyers. So... We're basically giving the opponent like a turn here to, to kind of figure this out. Uh, and if they don't, we might be in good shape. We'll see. Unfortunately, again, uh, the Fatal Push is not great against Evelyn. It's just over the cusp, even with the Revolt trigger. Uh, and so it is a little unfortunate, but again, it happens. It's all good. We'll see what the opponent is looking to do. Um, definitely should have dealt one more point of damage to them. 
uh, with that Stitcher Supplier attack, so 100% of misplay on my end. Again, I was thinking that the angels that came in on the Parhelion trigger had to be attacking uh, the the player that the Parhelion was attacking, and therefore I didn't go for that. But uh, looks like it's still good enough, and we got the first win, guys. Very, very happy with that. Let's go ahead, let's jump into game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, and here we are for game two. Let's see what we can do this time around. Uh, I do like this hand. We'll keep it. We've got the uh, Epicure and the Blood Tithe Harvester with, of course, the Deadly Dispute. This is not necessarily a crazy powerhouse hand by any means, but should give us what we need to kind of get ourselves started here. It looks like this is a Gigantha deck. I have no clue what that means. I'm assuming, okay, food, uh, fun. <laughs> uh, absolutely hate playing against this deck. It's certainly an annoying one, but uh, that's fine. I'm gonna pay two here and get the attack in now. Let's see if they actually wanna do anything about this. Um, then I'm actually just gonna deadly dispute now. I was kinda curious to see what they would do there, but that's fine. All right, uh, and now I'll just play a stitch of supplier. Again, our goal is to really churn through our deck, and so I'm perfectly happy to kind of toss some things away here to get further in. Croxa being in our graveyard is not necessarily a bad thing, although they do have a Hive of the Eye Tyrant, not anywhere near activation, but uh, certainly is a long-term thing that we're going to probably want to think about, um, and I'm sure they'll have removal, of course, too, so... All right, there's a Blood Tithe Harvester for the opponent. If they want to attack in, I am all too happy to block, um, but it looks like they're not willing to. Totally makes sense. Um, all right, so unfortunately, we actually don't have a good target uh, for the Grease Fang here. Uh, and so with that in mind, I think first things first, I'm actually just... Uh, not going to attack. Uh, I would love to, but I don't think now's the right time. Let's go ahead and throw this out tapped, and then I'll just throw a Blood Tithe Harvester of our own out. Uh, and again, we're just building up at this point. Uh, next turn, we can potentially just throw a Croxa down, uh, if we, depending on how they attack and if we get to block, all that kind of stuff. Um, or of course, you know, we have Blood Tokens to fill our graveyard, so we may not be able to do it next turn, maybe the turn after, we'll, we'll see. Um, but... I, uh, I'm curious. The Cauldron Familiar is a scary, scary card. If you guys don't know the Cauldron deck, uh, it's certainly not one that I'm happy to see uh, because it is very frustrating to deal with. Um, again, thankfully, the over-the-top decks can just kind of get them, um, at least in my experience, but that's not, of course, always the case. Uh, it's just generally speaking that that can work. Um, interesting. Okay. I was going to say, they might as well. Uh, interested in that, interesting that they're not attacking there. Uh, I'm perfectly happy to just save ourselves the maximum amount of damage at this point. Uh, that saves us three, which is a substantial chunk. And then, importantly, we actually get to mill three more cards. There's a Parhelion. Phenomenal. Uh, so that is going to kind of get us going here. Um very curious to see. So they wanted to kill the Cauldron Familiar. So again, really glad that I didn't go for that play. Um, interesting. All right. Uh, and we have another one. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. So definitely let's do this. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. We just go for the Grease Fang. And uh, we're kind of just hoping for the best right now. Um, hoping that they don't have a whole lot that they can do. Uh, the Grease Fang is certainly a big powerhouse play here, so... And we actually can just toss the other Parhelion. This is where these Blood Tokens come in handy, uh, because obviously we can just uh, pull multiples of these, so... This is great. Uh, Alright, so let's definitely go in for the attack. And again, this is what the deck is looking to do, just power out as much as we can, and uh, hope for the best. Excellent. So now we have lethal next turn. Um, <laughs> that's kind of the bonus about this deck. Again, this is where going over the top is so nice in Explorer. One, of course, the format allows for it. You've got a lot of powerhouse cards like Grease Fang, like Parhelion, all in the same format uh, that you don't nor normally get in standard. And so for me, it's a nice exploration. 
pun intended, uh, to kind of dig out a standard a little bit, just see, you know, what else is there. Uh, and thankfully we get to do that. Uh, and I'm, I, for one, actually really enjoy it. Uh, curious that they went for this. I'm wondering if they have another deadly dispute. Uh, or not another, but just a deadly dispute. Interesting. This doesn't seem like a game-winning play to me. Uh, and in fact, I think we just get to win next turn, regardless. I'm actually just not going to block. Um, and we're going to go ahead and toss the Parhelion into our graveyard. Uh, so we do sacrifice a permanent, which does mean they get to hit us, but again, we just get to attack the next turn, and there we go, guys. Easy win. Let's see if we can keep it up. Let's go into game three. All right, everybody. Here we are for game number three. Uh, ooh, how do we feel about this hand? On one hand, it's a really interesting hand, uh, right? The Fable is kind of nice. Um, against a slow deck, this could work, but I feel like not... You know what? Let's see. Let's test the limit of the deck. Let's see. I don't think this is a good hand. Normally, I would 100% throw this back, but I'm curious to see how the deck does uh, against what looks to potentially be a control deck of some kind. If they're running Steam Vents and they untap it turn one, counter burn maybe, something like that. I would not be surprised. They did scry to the bottom. Hmm. We will see. We will definitely see. Uh, I would love just any turn, any playable spell, really. Uh, technically not. Okay. Well, uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker is gonna have to do some major work for us here. I'm uh, not super optimistic about that, but we'll do the best we can. Um, opponent doesn't seem to be like off to the races here, though. Either. Not saying they're in a bad place, but. I don't know that they're necessarily doing exactly what they would like to do either. Um, let's go for the black source. I do think that's probably the more likely that we're going to need two of. Uh, and let's just hope they can't... Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was going to say, let's hope they don't kill the fable. Uh, because we really need the discard off of the fable. Uh, more so than anything else. That would be the prime, prime thing we need. They're going to go ahead and opt. Um, I'm assuming this might be like an epiphany deck. Goldspan Epiphany uh, is certainly a good a good deck. Um, not one that I'm really looking forward to being against. Or it's just a Sprite Dragon deck, which, again, not really a card I'm looking forward to being against, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. So I think the answer is actually not to block here. Um, that might be incorrect. I don't really know, but I'm thinking that's probably going to be the case. Um... So if we do this, yeah, that actually works, um, right? Can we play? No, we can't. Oh, did I misunderstand? As a just cause, discard a card. Oh, not it. I was thinking as you discard. I think it was. I was thinking like madness. Um, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. And I am gonna pay the two. All right. Let's bring back the Parhelion. Let's go ahead and do this. Fantastic. Uh, I am just going to attack him with both here. Um, mostly to get the extra treasure token, of course. But uh, this also just puts us in a much stronger position. Um, we could force the issue. Uh, alternatively, man, I wish not to just target creature would be really helpful. Um, so we wait on the lightning axe because we don't want to lose that. I'm just going to go for the Croxo then. All right, there we go. We got the win, guys. That's three. Uh, that's an undefeated run. That was really sick, guys. We're going to end it here again because I do want to make sure we're not missing a day. But look at that. We ranked up. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys, so Mardu Greasefang. First and foremost, I should point out that this was obviously pulled from like some of the, a list on Aetherhub of like the tier one decks in Explorer right now. We know the Greasefang deck is quite good, even if you're not a huge Explorer fan or if you haven't explored the format too much, you probably have heard of this deck. Uh, and for good reason, and I think we were able to demonstrate that uh, in these games. You, you are so quickly able to take over a game and not end it necessarily in one turn, but certainly get very close. 
Uh, and I think that's really the powerhouse ability here is that you're getting out from under a lot of the decks that are trying to get a little, you know, a, a cheeky combo off later on in the game or something like that. Uh, even the go wide decks, like against an Elves deck as an example, could probably, or uh, would probably struggle a bit against this. Their first couple of turns tend to be a bit more set up. Uh, obviously they can get a powerhouse turnout, and so certainly if they get that first, they win, but uh, there are plenty of plays in here that could outpace a lot of the other decks in the format right now. Uh, and so for me, I, I thought this was great. We, we did go undefeated. We got three straight wins. Uh, with a deck that, truthfully, we hadn't really piloted before. So I'm really happy to this uh, to, to have tried this. I think it speaks to the power level of the deck, and I certainly hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I really do appreciate everybody watching again. I appreciate everybody being supportive, as it has been such a busy time lately. Uh, but we are getting through it, and we're hopefully not missing too many days, and we're back at it, guys. So thank you guys very much. Again, don't forget to enter our giveaway for Dominaria United. That will be ending on September 16th. All the details on our uh, homepage here on YouTube and on our website, it resolvesmtg.com. Please do check that out. Uh, but all that to say, I love you guys very much. Have a fantastic Thursday. I will be home today. And I cannot wait to get back to it. I love you guys. I'll see you then.